conversation, it's really the actions. And that was one thing we made clear when we took over, and when I took over as president, that our endorsements were going to be earned, no, no longer just freely given and, and not just a party affiliation. They were going to be earned by the candidates. And so, um, you know, I, there was some disappointment up front when I took over. I think, you know, people expected us just to make an endorsement right away. And uh, uh, but to me, there was work to be done. Uh, we had a, a EV battery transition and in industry in transition that there, there was Electric a lot of vehicles. Yeah. For yeah. Things. Yeah. So a lot of work that needed to be done in that realm so that workers weren't left behind. And uh, um, and uh, and then, you know, obviously we had our contract campaign, a lot of work coming up with the big three fight. And uh, so, uh, you know, we, we had a lot of conversations throughout. But but at the end of the day, uh, you know, when we made this decision, we had to look at this is it's a simple decision for us because when we, we we put both candidates side by side and in our big three campaign uh you know we we use facts you know the fact that corporations have made quarter trillion dollars and workers were being left behind the facts that ceos raised their pay 40 percent over four years while workers were going backwards and so when we looked at the presidential endorsement we did the same thing we put two candidates side by side and we use facts and the facts tell a very telling picture for working class people and for our, our members in general. If you go back to the recession in 08, 09, Donald Trump blamed the auto workers for what was wrong with the companies. Joe Biden bet on the American worker and gave us a path forward. If you go to 2015, when Trump was a candidate for president, he talked about doing a rotation of our jobs in this country, uh, rotating our good paying jobs in the Midwest somewhere else where they would pay less and have us begging for our jobs back mm. at lower pay, uh, driving a race to the bottom. And you had in, in 19, when Trump was president, GM was on strike for 40 days. Mm -hmm. What did Donald Trump say or do to support the workers then? Zero. Uh, Lordstown Assembly Plant was slated for closure in Ohio in 2019 when Trump was president. He did nothing. Joe Biden, when he was president, and you know we, had, we were on strike in 2023. Mm -hmm. For the first time in our history, a sitting president joined the picket line. Uh, Belvedere Assembly Plant in Illinois, the same situation as Lordstown in Ohio, was closed. The community was written off for dead. Joe Biden engaged us and went to work for us to to bring that and revive that company. And we have two plants going in there now. So when you when you compare those things, when you look at the president talking about working class people, when you look at him talking about uh, not cutting Social Security, uh, not cutting Medicare, Donald Trump, every year of his presidency, pushed for cuts to Medicare and Social Security. Um, when you look at all those things, it draws a very distinct picture. Joe Biden has a history of serving people and standing with working class people. And Donald Trump has a history of serving himself and standing for the billionaire class.